Speaking of women's rights, just yesterday, his former parliamentary secretary came out publicly, Selena Cesar, Cesar Chavan, and said that she was abused, intimidated, and mistreated by this prime minister, that he used her for his fake feminist agenda, and that he treated her like garbage, Mr. Wow. Speaker. It is terrible the way he exercises hypocrisy. What a goddamn bombshell just dropped about the true character, the true nature of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And we are going to be deep diving into just exactly what this woman said. And she is one voice among many who have said the same thing that ever so conveniently, maybe it's because he, oh, I don't know, owns the media, has eliminated Canadians from seeing certain content on the internet and is continuing to get rid of free speech that we haven't actually seen the full depth of exactly what a lot of these people have said after they were finally free from working under him. I'm Jasmine Lane, like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, whatever it is that you wanna do if you appreciate this content, it means an awful lot to me. And I will add that this absolutely damning interview that took place with Dr. Jordan B. Peterson is just so perfect, given you know how the liberals have been all like, oh, the conservatives are gonna take away abortion rights. No, they are not. Please shut up. That's not true. I'm so sick and tired of hearing it. The fear mongering, the lies, the absolute propaganda that has no factual evidence whatsoever. Yet all of these people on the internet who clearly have no idea what the hell they are talking about before choosing to chime in on politics online are using this as a fear-mongering tactic. And it is so absurd. And the most absurd part of all is the fact that it comes out of the Liberal Party of Canada, one of the least feminists. Well, I'm gonna keep saying loud and clearly that I am a feminist. Least equal rights, least liberal parties that the country of Canada has ever seen. The, the, the level of contempt and almost hatred that he approached me with. I was, I have never felt more scared in my life of someone to be in a room with someone. I just decided that I was not going to let the actions of one person dictate how I left government. And I was not going to let Justin Trudeau continue to be presenting himself as this sunny ways, great politician when I knew that he was the emperor with no clothes on. So what did you do about that? Like you had some famous blow ups as you departed from the political scene. Now, this is reminiscent. You mentioned Bill Morneau and Judy Wason Rabel. So you're, you're, I mean, part, another of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you is because, you know, three establishes a pattern and there seems to be very close affinity. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but from the outside, close affinity between what happened with Morneau and what happened with Rabo and what happened with you. And that's three. When you decided to speak in your own voice again, given that you weren't given the opportunity to speak as the press secretary anyways, so... What happened with Bill Morneau and Judy wilson Raybo, And then also what happened to you when you started to reclaim your territory, let's say? I'll get a little bit personal here, but anybody who is following this YouTube channel, who are familiar with my 11-year career as a traditional media broadcaster before very abruptly leaving, this story and the things that she says resonate so deeply with me, and not just me, with so many people. It's something I started to call out, which led to my departure. There's a few things here that I really distinctly want to point out. I think they are so critically important to recognize in your own life, to recognize in government. And it is incredibly disheartening how many people are willing to overlook something really evil that's going on simply because it would be inconvenient for them to act on it. Or in the case of Justin Trudeau, because he has rewritten the legislature where they actually cannot act on it. This is something that I have spoken and written about very heavily. So I'll ask you this, what is a reputation? Because you do not get to choose your reputation, right? Your reputation is given to you 
by how you live your life, how you treat people around you, and how you make others feel. Your reputation is a direct reflection of who you are as a person. And one of the most difficult things here is the fact that Justin Trudeau as a person is this deeply narcissistic who functions on malevolence, ill intent, and control but who also has the power of shifting the public narrative around him. People who are very bad actors can often quite easily rise to the top because they have that thing in their brain where they can really hone in on control and they do it in a way that you don't realize it, where they really chip at your soul and your dignity and who you are as a person. And they do it so slowly until it's too late. And then one day, whether by choice or by force, you are removed from that environment and you wake up and you think, holy shit, I can't believe that happened to me. I just thought feeling like that and being so abused and manipulated and controlled and coerced was normal because people in high up positions who are given control with personality disorders like that are very good at operating in that system. He first he said, well, that was the same day that Jody Wilson Raybould had stepped down. He couldn't have he pot he couldn't have two women of color leave at the same day. That's what he told you. It's, it's, really? Like, dude, that's not my problem. <laughs> yes. That was his first response yes. to your Yes. Okay, so that yes. so no, I'm gonna play psychologist here for a minute, okay. Because yes. that's really not Please. that's seriously not that's seriously not good. Right? Because if he was a wise man and if he was a mature man, he would have understood that you put your you you divested yourself of your business, you your life took quite a turn, and that even if you two didn't get along, the fact that you'd been in government for only four years and you were leaving without running for re-election, without a pension, meant you were going back to square one in many ways. And so the first thing he should have said, even if he would have been somewhat truly self-aware and and still putting his own interests first, he should have at least had the bloody sense to act as if he cared about what you were telling him. The fact that his first response was, I'm dead serious about that. Like even if he was faking it, you know, if even if he was a wise faker, the first thing he should have done was said like something like, well, you know, I know we've had our differences, I really appreciate your service. You put an awful lot of on the line for this. It's really unfortunate it didn't work out. Um, is there anything I can do for you to make your departure more straightforward? I wish we could have worked together more sincerely, right? Definitely, definitely. And then if he was a genuine human being, so to speak, that would have actually bothered him. But the fact that he came out and said, I can't afford to have two women of color leave me the first the same day, like, all that means is that every single thing that you regarded was as a betrayal was, in fact, a betrayal. The, the, the level of contempt and almost hatred that he approached me with, I, was, I have never felt more scared in my life of someone to be in a room with someone. And I knew Have that you that ever happened. Heard of wounded narcissism. Is oh that no, a term I have that not. Rings a bell. No. Mm. Well, beware <laughs> of it. Seriously. Do you think this revelation from yet another cabinet minister of Justin Trudeau coming forward? and claiming that, uh, yep, he is far from what he's cracked up to be, will have any impact whatsoever on the public narrative. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this far. Like the video if you want, and I will see you tomorrow.